So hello everyone. I'm really grateful for the opportunity to talk with you about some of the alternatives to insecticides for fall armyworm management. In particular, I'll talk a little bit about the role natural enemies might play in the suppression of this pest. First, I would like to note that after decades of research and years of management practice, fall armyworm remains a significant pest in multiple commodities in its native range. And with the worldwide expansion of this insect, it is also proven again that it is very difficult to manage, even in these new locations. As the other presenters have discussed, the reason fall armyworm is so difficult to manage is because it has so many elements of its natural biology that support its success. So in its management then, we need to target as many aspects of its biology as we can to reduce the population. There is not going to be a silver bullet, any one tool that solves the fall armyworm problem. We need to develop new and innovative approaches that work together. And these management tools need to be tailored for Australian commodities, landscapes, and conditions. If we learn anything from the overseas experience, we know that we need alternatives to pesticides to manage fall armyworm. Overseas, there are options to include genetically modified traits that will affect fall armyworm. But other than cotton, we do not have that option available at this time in Australia. So we need to look to other alternatives for management, such as natural enemies and cultural control methods. Again, as we look overseas experience, there are some success in using both approaches. But what are our options here in Australia? Today, I will focus on what our options might be for natural enemies. There are different groups of natural enemies that can help provide some suppression of fall armyworm populations. We are focusing first on the natural enemies that are already present in Australia. These organisms, the ones that already live here, need to engage in what's called a host shift to move over to fall armyworm. But if enough of them do this, their combined effects can contribute to the suppression of a pest population. So who can be part of this suite of natural enemies? Native organisms, for example, that feed on native insects have been known to move over to non-native insects as part of their diet. This could include some of our predators such as spiders, ants, wasps, birds, and um, predatory bugs. There may even be native parasitoids that might use fall armyworm as a host. Then there are those natural enemies that enter Australia, either through accidental introduction or through deliberate introduction, usually as a biological control agent. Some of these organisms have been introduced to help manage other pests that are closely related to fall armyworm. These can also potentially shift over to fall armyworm. In Western Australia and in uh, the Northern Territory in Queensland, we are all collecting fall armyworm and looking to discover some of the natural enemies that are using fall armyworm already in the field. These are currently unmanaged and opportunistic natural enemies. Some have already been identified, but the extent of their impact is unclear. For example, in Western Australia, three parasitoids have been successfully reared from fall armyworm larvae and identified. With further research, we could potentially use these in a more deliberate way. But at this point, we know that they are out there and at least trying to use fall armyworm as food. There are also other parasitoids already in Australia that are known to attack fall armyworm overseas. These three species listed here have potential to be managed as part of a biological control program in Australia. The third one there, Trichogramma proteosum, is already mass reared and being used to manage other uh, uh, pests in horticultural systems in Australia. The other two, Telonemus Telonomus remus and Cartesia marginiventris, uh, they have been introduced into Australia, uh, need to be recovered and then um, developed for mass rearing. In all, in all three cases, their effectiveness on fall armyworm still needs to be evaluated, but preliminary ex experiments with Trichogramma proteosum have begun. 
The third option for biological control and use of natural enemies is with a, a very uh, interesting group of organisms called entomopathogens. Entomopathogens are disease-causing agents and they have the potential to contribute to fall armyworm management. However, these can be, can be hard to both identify and culture. If suitable entomopathogens are identified that are already present here in Australia, cultures could be used to inoculate fields. But even better is if they can be developed into formulations that can be sprayed like insecticides. There are already commercial formulations of fall armyworm virus and others being developed that are now available overseas. Efforts are currently underway to get permission for these products to become available in Australia. So our key steps in, turn, in, terms, of, in terms of looking for alternatives to uh, insecticides for the management of fall armyworm include surveying for existing natural enemies, investigating the possibility for mass rearing of parasitoids that are already present in Australia, and investigating the potential entomopathogens that are already in Australia and pursuing licensing and permission for existing commercial formulations to become available in Australia. And as Alex and others have noted, the power uh, in finding solutions is in our collaborations. And I just wanted to highlight the amazing people that are working together here in Western Australia and across the North uh, to look at uh, solutions for fall armyworm. And I also wanted to uh, also uh, honor the growers who make the hard decisions every day in terms of managing this and the other challenging pests to uh, provide a secure food supply for us here in Australia.